Do you ever wonder what it means to be a pro developer? Is it skills or experience? Maybe both, but I think that it's also about cultivating strong habits. So today I will share with you 20 habits that boosted my own dev career. And let me tell you, some of these took me years to figure out. Are you also ready to level up? Then let's go. The first habit is to learn something new every day. The key is to not only learn something, but also to write it down. I personally like to keep this information in an Excel sheet, but you can store it wherever you want. With this simple habit, you will be surprised by how many things you've learned and also how useful and easy it is to retrieve that information. For example, this is how I came up with the content for my video 11 tips for Unity. I basically just skimmed through my 2023 list and selected the best tip. Another benefit of this habit is that it will naturally make you seek out new knowledge, giving you more opportunities to learn things that you would have maybe ignored otherwise. So try this. Every day before you log off, write down something that you've learned today. Alright, next habit is to experiment with core concept of game programming like game architectures and design patterns. It's always a good idea to read about it and to watch a few tutorial videos. However, the key to acquire a deep understanding of those concepts is to try them yourself. And this leads me to my next point. Habit number three, make side projects. Side projects are a great way to test new architectures or design patterns. The key is to have a clear objective in mind when starting it. What are you trying to learn by making this project? For example, I made this game because I wanted to learn about object pooling. Since the beginning of my career, I cannot remember a time where I did not have a side project. If I'm being honest, I feel that I've learned as much, if not more from those projects than from working full-time in a game studio. Instead of aiming for one big project, try completing a few smaller ones. This will give you confidence and motivation to continue making games. You might feel though that you don't have time to work on a side project. And I get it, but try to make time. It does not need to be much, even an hour or a half an hour every day. Consistency is key here. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Just make sure you create a Git repository for each project and you keep a backup on the cloud. This project can then be included in your own portfolio or become your own library of knowledge. Number four, split a task into smaller ones. Earlier in my career, when I received a task, I would directly start to write a bunch of code. I know, it's super exciting and you want to work while your thoughts are streaming. Instead, a more boring but professional approach is to plan before you start. So next time, when you have to make a feature, start first by splitting it into smaller ones. This will not only help you to simplify the problem, but will also help you to estimate the time for each task. Another benefit is that you can identify early on which part of the task can be problematic and order them in priority. I like to use Trello for organizing tasks, but you can use any other software really. If you're struggling to split up the task, you can try to use some AI tools to help you with that. It can sometimes come up with tasks that you might have forgotten. Number five, make a class diagram. This is a pretty standard exercise in computer sciences, yet very few game developers actually do it. Doing this will help you for defining all the different classes, methods, and relationships involved in a particular feature. You can draw it on paper, on a whiteboard, or digitally. I like to use a tool like Lucidchart because it makes it easy to share it with other people. All right, number six, block focus time. If you are easily distracted, it can be hard to get anything done. In order to focus, block a dedicated amount of time where you don't allow distractions. Do not check your phone or get lost on the internet. I like to block one or two hours at a time, but if it seems a lot, you can start with 20 to 30 minutes. You can make it easier by blocking time on your calendar. This will make you accountable and prevent other people to book meetings during that time. Number seven, reread your own code. You probably heard about the term clean code before. It's code that is simple, understandable and reliable. So here is a simple trick that you can apply right now. After you've done writing your code, imagine that you are another person and that you read this code for the very first time. If done well, this simple method can be very effective to clarify your code, especially if you read it a few days later. Number eight, refactor code. I know some people hate refactoring, because they don't feel like they're actually creating something new. However, refactoring is one of the best exercises to improve your skills. It will force you to see the big picture and to find a cleaner or more optimized way to do things. Number nine, master the debugger. For people who don't come from a computer science background, these skills might not be obvious at first. 
yet they are very important if you want to improve as a developer. Debug.logs are handy, but sometimes they won't be enough. Get comfortable with breakpoints, conditional breakpoints, local variable, stack trace, and build debugging. These will help you to resolve even the trickiest bugs. Number 10, fix the source of the issue. Sometimes it's very tempting to do a quick fix, like a null check. However, adding a null check only hides the error. It doesn't actually solve the underlying issue. It's basically like putting dust under a rug. Instead, try to really understand why is this issue even happening in the first place. When you start approaching errors like this, it might lead you to do some refactoring or to discover a more critical problem. Researching the root cause not only fixes the problem effectively, but also deepens your understanding of the code base and APIs. Number 11, leverage version control functionalities. Whether you're working alone or in a team, you should always use version control. I personally use Git, but there are plenty of other possible solutions out there. Have you ever wondered why your code used to work, but after a few commits, it does not anymore? Well, with version control, it's simple to find out. Right-click on any file and select Git history. In here, you can track exactly which commit changed which line and who did it. Git blame takes it even further, revealing who modified a specific line and when. Number 12, make atomic commits. This simply means that instead of making a bunch of changes and creating a single commit, you make smaller commits containing one or few changes. But what are the benefits of making atomic commits? One, it's easier to review. Two, it's easier to revert in case something goes wrong. Three, it's easier to cherry pick to another branch. Four, it simplifies tracking changes when using Git history. And five, it reduces the chances of merge conflict. Trust me, you and your team will benefit a lot from doing this. Next, always review your changes before committing. You'll often find unnecessary files or line of codes that don't need to be included in your commit. This is also a great opportunity to make sure your commit message describes the changes accurately. It's always better to be safe than sorry. A great way to be safe is to always test your change before committing. Sounds obvious, right? Well, you would be surprised how easy it is to make a mistake, even when making a tiny change. By simply testing first, you prevent these mistakes before they affect your team. Speaking about bugs, it's a good practice to reproduce it first before trying to fix it. Otherwise, how would you even know that you actually fixed it? Maybe you introduce a new bug. Likewise, when reporting a bug, it's super helpful to write down the steps for reproducing it, ideally with screenshots or a video. This makes it much simpler for you or another team member to fix the issue. Number 16, keep an open mind. As a junior developer, you don't have a lot of experience. This can sometimes lead you to believe that one solution is the best but game development isn't black or white. Every solution has pros and cons depending on the situation. Experienced developers understand this and remain open-minded to different perspectives. Number 17, communicate early and often. Communication is crucial for any developers, especially if you work remotely. Make sure your team knows what you're working on. You can let them know by posting a message on Slack, by assigning a task to yourself, and by speaking during meetings. Of course, you can use some plugins and AI to improve the process, but it's usually not enough. This one is still challenging for me, but you do get better over time. Number 18, be independent, but curious. With more experience, you will learn that most problems can be solved by researching the code base or the internet. Most of the time, it's not necessary to ask a colleague, especially if they are busy. Try to solve the issue on your own first and reach out only if you're struggling for too long. However, that does not mean you should not ask questions entirely. Asking questions is a great way to connect with your team, especially if you're new. Finding the right balance is challenging. You don't want to be clingy like a koala to a tree, but neither solitary like a lone wolf. Number 19, help others. Really, whenever you have an opportunity to help someone, do it. By explaining something to another person, you will actually understand it better yourself. You see, help goes both ways. So if you help others, others will help you. When helping someone, try to guide that person just enough so that they can figure out the answer themselves. This will make it much easier for them to remember the solution. Finally, if you notice that people are often asking you for help, it's generally a good sign that you're becoming a more senior developer. And number 20, work with other programmers. This will naturally force you to align on code conventions 
and to improve at naming. Also, by getting somebody else to review your code and asking questions, your coding skills will increase significantly. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. And let me know in the comments below if you also have some good habits that you would like to share.